In this video we're going to look at the process of nuclear fission. During this process you start with quite a large, heavy, unstable isotope, for example uranium. Towards that uranium you release a neutron and that neutron travels quite slowly towards the uranium. The reason why it's traveling slowly is so that it can be absorbed into the nucleus of the uranium. At that point the nucleus becomes very unstable and it starts to oscillate. Eventually there's a sufficient amount of energy for that nucleus to break apart and it breaks into two smaller atoms and then three extra neutrons. So that process again. A neutron is fired slowly towards an unstable nucleus. There's your neutron, there's the unstable nucleus. The neutron is absorbed into the nucleus of the atom it makes it even more unstable. The atom then splits apart releasing lots of energy so it splits into two smaller pieces. Two smaller atoms are created and three more neutrons are released. So these are your three extra neutrons released. The fission of a fuel like uranium creates these two smaller nuclei but it also creates three extra neutrons we need to think about what these neutrons can now go on to do. They can go and take part in something called a chain reaction. Because these neutrons have been released, they can now join with nuclei of some more unstable isotopes and then cause them to undergo nuclear fission. So let's have a look at what that would look like. So this is our first neutron coming towards our first atom, causes it to undergo fission, releases three neutrons, hits three more unstable atoms and then these neutrons then hit some more unstable atoms creating a huge release of energy. You can still see the number of neutrons available there. So after each cycle, so after each step of nuclear fission, this is how many atoms will be releasing energy. So you can see initially it's just one, then because it releases three neutrons there are then three atoms releasing energy, it goes up to nine each of those nine atoms release three neutrons meaning 27 will then take part and again another three times as many another three times as many and so on and so on by the time you get up to the 30th cycle you will have 6800 billion atoms taking part in your chain reaction each of these cycles takes a fraction of a second to be completed so within less than a second you've got this number of atoms releasing energy that's an incredibly large amount of energy and that would take the form of a nuclear explosion. And that's obviously not what happens inside a nuclear power station. So inside the power station they obviously do something to make sure this chain reaction doesn't get too out of hand. It doesn't increase as rapidly as this which would cause obviously a nuclear explosion. This is the inside of a nuclear reactor. You've got two things inside. The first thing is a fuel rod. These are made out of, for example, uranium. And this is where nuclear fission happens. So the atoms split apart and release neutrons. There needs to be more than one fuel rod. So neutrons can travel from one fuel rod to the other, causing a chain reaction. Now, if this were to get out of hand, there would be a nuclear explosion. In between the fuel rods, there are these things. These are control rods. They're made out of boron and those rods absorb neutrons and prevent an uncontrolled chain reaction from occurring. So these rods can be moved in and out in between the fuel rods. Watch what happens when the control rods are almost completely removed from the fuel rods. So the temperature rapidly increases inside the reactor. This represents temperature over here and then eventually pressure builds up inside the reactor due to the high temperatures and there's a catastrophic explosion. That's obviously not what happens inside a real nuclear reactor. What happens instead, the control rods are lowered and then the fuel is allowed to undergo fission. You'll notice because the control rods are considerably lower, the temperature rise is far lower as well. So that means that the pressure inside the reactor is still manageable, it's still safe, it's not going to cause an explosion. If the rate of fission is too low, so if the temperature released is too small, the control rods can be raised slightly. If 
that then gets too high they can be lowered and that's controlled by a computer program. The temperatures inside the reactor are carefully controlled by raising and lowering these control rods. If they're raised higher the temperature will increase, if they're lowered the temperature will decrease. As well as the control rods there is also a liquid coolant which circulates through the reactor core. What the liquid coolant does is it takes away heat energy from the fuel rods. So it passes over the fuel rods, heat energy is transferred then from the fuel rod to the coolant and the coolant then leaves the reactor core. So the arrows here represent the flow of the coolant across the fuel rods taking away that heat energy. The heat energy that's inside the coolant is then used to turn water into steam that steam is then used to turn a turbine which spins a generator creating electricity as you can see here. So inside the reactor the nuclear fuel heats up this purple liquid here which is your coolant. The coolant then turns some water into steam. The steam leaves the containment structure then spins a turbine. The turbine is used to spin a generator. The generator then creates electricity. The steam then passes through a condenser which is some cool water coming from a reservoir circulating inside a pipe this cools down the steam into normal water again and that through a pump back into the steam generator because this water coming back in is cooler it's taking away a lot of the heat energy from the reactor keeping it at a manageable level and also allowing that heat energy to be used to create electricity